Because Hamas, for all its problems and failures, resists and is resilient and has maintained the spirit of resistance that's so important to the political morale of the Palestinian movement. I wouldn't judge their desire to, or their, their feeling that the only effective form of resistance is to uh, defend themselves violently. I mean, that's, that's a decision that I don't think it's appropriate for someone outside the context of oppression to make. Hamas, which is accused of being a terrorist organization, of course, uh, has limited its violence since its political election in 2006 to responding uh, to uh, Israeli provocations. It hasn't used violence as a way of uh, promoting uh, the empowerment of a Palestinian movement of liberation. In fact, its, its politics have been directed toward long-term peaceful coexistence with Israel uh, if Israel withdraws to the 67 borders. It's offered a 50-year uh, uh, plan of peaceful coexistence. Can you talk about the obstacles that you face as you tried to raise these issues over these past six years as the top U.N. investigator in the territories? Well, there were uh, two main kinds of obstacles. The, uh, I was uh, very much uh, attacked in a kind of defamatory way by U.N. Watch and other very uh, extreme uh, Zionist uh, organizations. Which try wherever I went, anywhere in the world, they would try to prevent me from speaking and uh, mounted a kind of uh, defamatory campaign, called me a anti-Semite, a leading anti-Semite. The Wiesenthal Center in L.A. listed me as the third most dangerous anti-Semite in the world, which was made me feel I must be doing something right in this role. 